Hello and welcome to Biology Class. My name is Ayo and today we'll be talking about evolution in organisms, evolution in living organisms. Evolution is a series of changes that have occurred over a long period of time in organisms leading to the formation of new species. Leading to the formation of new species. Now, what, what, what do you mean by this? It means that over time, something was... Okay, let's look at... Let's take this for an example. This is a duster. Now, over time, if I keep using this duster and I try making changes, so, just subtle, subtle changes to it, it's, it's bound to become a different thing than a duster. This marker here... Also, if over time I start making some adjustment to it, it starts getting some little bit of changes and then it becomes a new species. And that is what we are talking about in evolution. Now, this evolution does not just come to be. There are some factors that affect evolution or that cause evolution or that trigger evolution. One of the major factors is variation. Variation. Another factor that causes this is adaptation. Adaptation. This, these are the major. These are one of the major factors that cause um, uh, that causes evolution. And then we also have mutation. We have adaptation. We have variation, and we have mutation. Like Mendel will tell you in heredity, Mendel will tell you that. The traits gotten by parents are passed down to their offspring. They are passed down to their offspring independently. So, which means if a father attains a particular trait, it is bound to pass it down to the, to the child, to the offspring, or if a plant, especially during uh, pollination, they pass it down. Now, let's talk about this adaptation, variation, and mutation. How do they affect evolution? Adaptation is the, is the process whereby living organisms develop special features for, to, and to survive adverse conditions. That is adaptation. Developing special features to survive adverse conditions. Take, for instance, uh, in a place where there is heat, okay, where there is cold, an organism starts start developing thick skin to survive in the cold, even though naturally that organism does not surviving the cold, but because of the, uh, the, the, the need to survive, the survival instinct kicks in, and then it start developing thick skin, it start developing uh, broader lungs, and start developing features that will enable it to survive in that cold. That is adaptation. And that person, or that organism rather, has now developed something that is different from the normal species. And so, over time, when that trait has not been passed down to different offspring, we now start having a different species from the original one we have. And that is adaptation. And that is evolution. What about variation? Variation caused by, caused by um, genetic assortment. Variation based on uh, physical traits or um, physiological traits. And this variation, uh, just like um, Lamarck said, Lamarck said that giraffes initially they used to have short necks, but because of them trying to get food from a longer place, they developed long necks. Those that developed long necks were able to survive and pass that on to their offspring, and then they have the long neck. And that's why we don't have giraffes with short necks right now. And that's an example of variation. Example of this. Now, mutation. Mutation is a sudden break in the genetic makeup of an organism. A sudden break. So if the genetic makeup of an of organism is supposed to be black and then there's a break, it's possible it comes out as red. So and when that happens and it's passed down, it continues that way. You won't even know. Let, here's an example. Take for instance um, someone that has lived, uh, let me say a dog that has lived so long in in a different region. Take say for instance a dog that was that was rich, that is originally meant to be uh, in Antarctica. Okay, no, let me not use that in Canada. But then the dog moved down to a place like South Africa. And so over time the dog is going to get uh, can get mutated. Now this dog, when it gets to that place, 
and starts breeding, it's going not going to start looking like the one in South Africa. It's going to look like those ones in Canada because it's a different place. And that's the same thing that happens in mutation. So when this mutation occurs, it gives the organism a different face, a different structure. And when that happens, the offspring that will come out from that organism are going to be a new species. And that is how evolution has occurred. Now, just a simple um, overview here about what we're talking about in evolution. Evolution in plants and in animals are similar, although they are still different. In animals, we are told that uh, animals come from simple virus. A simple virus. And we all know virus can either be living or not living. But because that's RNA and DNA, then it's able to pass on information. So it moves on from there to internal organisms like amoeba, paramecium. From there, it moves on into uh, polyethylene to uh, move on in, in, into uh, some multicellular organism like your platyemetes to your collectors to the mollusca to the um, to the crustaceans to the mollusca and then to the pisces to the apes to the pisces to the apes um, to the pisces to the reptiles to the apes and then to the apes at the top of that so we have the virus here moving on to the cellular organism the cellular to multicellular, like your platyemetes and the lines, or let me say to your invertebrates, basically, then we have the invertebrates here, the invertebrates, your polyethylene, your platyemetes, your uh, other plant, um, one, your anilidas, your arthropodas, mention them, those ones, they are here. Now, after the invertebrate, then we don't have the vertebrate. Under the vertebrate, that's where we have your Pisces, your reptiles, your amphibians, your apes, and apes. Let me arrange this well. It's parallel. Um, so we have the amphibians here, we have the reptiles here, we have the yes, apes, and then the mammals, which are at the top. So this is like an evolutionary tree that occurs in animals. You will see from a virus which is a unicellular organism, but it's one of the, the smallest unicellular organism, and then to the other much more complex unicellular organism that is much more living, down to the mammals where man is at the top. Now, one of the things like we established in our theories or evidence of evolution is that there is a resemblance in them. There's a resemblance. Take for instance, Pisces and amphibians they share gills, they share resemblance in their structure. Especially when they are when they have their own ones. So this is how evolution occurs in living organisms. In plants, the the topmost organism in plants are the flowering plants. They are the flowering plants. We have some plants that are not flowering. We have some basic plants, the, the talophytes, talophytes, bryophyta, and then we have the angiosperms. The talophytes, the bryophytes, and then we have the angiosperms. It's under the uh, under the somato somatophytes rather, that we now have the angiosperms and the gymnosperms. Under the gymnosperms, we now have them structured into the flowering plant. And that is how we talk about evolution. And this evolution is not saying that my, uh, it's not saying that mammals and amoeba they are the same. It's saying that if you look at it from how they start, it is evident enough that life began from simple to complex. That is what they are saying, that life began from simple to complex. If you're building a house, you don't drop the building, you start from the simple to complex, you start from foundation and start adding the building blocks. And then it starts looking somewhat like what you know to the finished product. So that is just an overview of the 
evolution. Thank you.